What we did is we took this top soil off of this bin. We were actually going to move the soil and put it in pots for some plants. We found some skink eggs. Here are the eggs we found. I accidentally disturbed the nest while getting some soil to pot up some other pots. Um, we're going to do the best we can to try and um, save these guys. Hopefully we didn't drown them. They are very far along the process. So hopefully we can um, save these guys. But what we did is we took the top soil out, the real dry soil. And this down here is a lot of moisture. This is the environment, about the depth we found the eggs at. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this medium and put it down into this bin and then I'm going to measure the temperature and the soil moisture using an analog moisture sensor to kind of get targets of where I need to be um, to kind of get these eggs to hatch and, and we found one egg that was uh, a little broken and uh, the lizards are developed so they should be hatching any day now. So we're just going to softly kind of comb through here just to make sure there's no eggs in this bin. Just kind of get this filled up so we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we've got about maybe two inches of kind of moist soil um, in our bin. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the eggs in now and spread them out. And then we're going to layer the rest of the moist soil over on top of them. So there's the eggs. We're putting them in. We're spacing them apart as much as we can. Uh, what we're going to do now is we've got, you know, the eggs kind of spread out. We're just going to go ahead and layer this, this moist top soil over them. So what skinks will do is they'll stay with their eggs until they hatch, and then they'll abandon their young right when they hatch. So this skink actually came back and found its eggs. That's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we are going to put this uh, box kind of right back where we found it. Um, so we're going to put three different sensors in this skink terrarium, and we're going to be putting the moisture sensor, the motion sensor, and the temperature sensor and we'll, we're going to be put, putting this so that we make sure that it's hospitable for the skink eggs and the motion sensor so that we could we know when it hatches and, and the temperature one to make sure it's at the right heat. We're going to do the moisture sensor first and the blue, the blue wire will go to, towards you or towards the space. And the temperature will, the yellow, the yellow wire will go to the temperature, which is labeled. And the motion sensor will go in one of these. It doesn't really matter which. So we put our it in the pink enclosure and we just stuck it to the terrarium with velcro and we're going to put all the sensors in right now there. and the motion sensor so i found something cool for the motion sensor what we can do is is we can just kind of lay it right here over this edge and then go ahead and shut that flap yeah, so we can hang it and it'll point downwards. Cool. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this set up and plugged in and programmed. And then um, when we get some motion, we'll get an alert. And then we'll come out here and we'll take some pictures of some hatching skinks. So we've got the, um, the enclosure and everything set up here. So we just have to program it so that everything works how it's supposed to. And we get to see this, the skinks hatch. There's our motion detector pointed downwards, so it's going to catch an angle of motion downwards. We might miss, you know, something over here, but eventually it's going to trigger pretty quick. Our soil moisture sensor is down and buried, as well as our submersible temperature sensor. So let's go ahead and get this guy programmed. Okay, we're going to create a new profile. We're just going to call this one Lizard Box. We don't have any motors or switch channels. We're not going to be using any of the motor switch channels this time. What we do have is we have a motion detector. I believe we put it on digital IO2, um, so we want to just make sure that it matches either these three pins or these three pins. This would be digital IO1 if, if it were over here, but I think it's over here. If not, we'll just go move it. We want to set an alert on trigger. Lizards are here! Okay, so the lizards are here. What we want to do is we're going to put on what we call multi-detect trigger, because we don't want any false alarms. So detects to trigger we're gonna do two detects 
and then for a trigger delay we're not going to delay to send out the trigger to the server and the trigger action we're not going to trigger anything we're just going to make sure that it does two detects to send off a trigger but when you're done with that make sure you deploy and then our temperature sensor we put right here on pull up sensor 2 so what we're going to do there is set that to a temperature sensor and we're not going to do anything with an alert on trigger and we're not going to do anything actually we are going to do a low temp trigger and if this thing drops below 80 degrees we want to know uh, when you're incubating lizards, you want to keep them between about 80 and 90, and I think we want to target between 80 and 85. Uh, we're not going to trigger any components into action. We just want to know if the temperature drops below 80. And then for the soil moisture sensor, very similar. For the analog, we'll put a soil moisture sensor here. We're going to do an alert on trigger as well. Um, so... Lizard soil moisture low, and then the trigger moisture level, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to trigger the alert on. I want to see what it's reporting when we assign it. So we'll come back and we'll change this later because we want it to report a moisture level, anything below what it's currently reporting right now. We're not going to calibrate the sensor or anything. We're just going to use the levels that it's reporting right now. We want it to maintain that uh, similar moisture that it has right now, um, which is the same state as we found the eggs. So we'll deploy that, and that's that's it. A moisture sensor, a temperature sensor, and a motion detector. That's what we're using on this device. So now we're going to go back to the dashboard. We can go back to Facepalm, and we're going to go ahead and change him to Lizard Box and save details. And we can see Facepalm getting his data back. One thing I wanted to, to let you know is that the last analog reading 658. The highest it's read is 672. That's from the zeros from when we had it unplugged. The way we've got it calibrated, we ended up just copying the, the calibration from the sensor where we pulled it from. So this is the calibration range of, of what we're going to allow it to re read. Based on this range, you've got Facepalm is reporting at level 3. So what we're going to do is when he drops to level 2, which is going to be pretty a little bit drier than where it is now, that's when we're going to trigger our alert for the actual moisture level in here. As you can see, we're getting pretty decent temperature readings, but back here, the moisture level, since we had it set to level six it's already triggered so let's go ahead and get that set right and then this temperature looks pretty good I like that 80 degree threshold we've got so that's okay and then we'll go downstairs and trigger this to make sure that this is working so let's just first change our trigger level to two okay yeah check it out face palm he's 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 awesome so this moisture sensor was triggered 21 minutes ago when we had the level set to six instead of triggering at level two so it hasn't triggered since that's good We've got our temperature sensor reporting the appropriate temperature, so that's cool. That's working real good. And then we checked the motion detector, and it was actually on Digital IO 1. We moved it over to Digital IO 2. We're happy our device is working. So that's it. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys.